sit on the edge of a building and look out to new horizons like, for real, this could be Verizon, can you hear me? Can you hear me now as if I was screaming, should I sit down? What exactly is going around? And I'm scared to look down, but what if I jump? And then hit the ground as, I think no one would frown, no one would care, no one would shed a tear, and my heart would just stop while my legs would break. Get collapsed in my, get, get collapsed into my pelvis and everything would shake. Or maybe an earthquake would move around the building and everybody would think I just fell. The lies I believed and was told that I, it didn't matter, that no one would miss me, that everyone would be better off. Not only that, but I could finally ask God in person why. I have so much pain, why do you let this all happen? I don't know how to hold my ground when it feels like people who mattered most want to bury me beneath it. And when I looked across the room in a mirror that was so broken when I saw myself, all I could see is some stupid guy with red hair, acne on his face, tears running down the cheek, and I just want to be whole. And when I was told by work by two girls that I thought were too pretty for me to even look at, I cried and they cried with, not understanding how all these people could make a single, a single person feel this way. These are the lies that I was told and something I believed for a really long time, ever since I was in the second grade. It's a pretty young age to be thinking about these topics and to be thinking about my life in such a worthless aspect. Some statistics that you may or may not know is that in 2017, Idaho was ranked as the fifth highest suicide rate. Uh, we don't have a very large population either. And that's not compared to population, that's actually by number. So that's not just, you know, by population in other states, you're just going to prepare it and equal it out. But that's 57% higher than the national average was in 2017. In 2020, now we're number two in the United States. It's a serious problem that keeps getting worse as time goes on. We see it every day without even knowing it. It's a, it's a statistic and an actual fact that you have a chance of walking by every single day five to 10 suicide people, depending on the state you live in. It's really sad to think about. You don't know how sad someone is, you don't know how bad they're hurting until you ask that question, until you decide to make yourself courageous, until you decide to be bold. And that sucks a lot, and it's dangerous. But it's so worth it. When someone actually gets to have that conversation, they feel worth it to you. You're making a change just by one person. And with this, Suicide is also the second leading cause in Idaho. First being cancer. Not a specific cancer, but the generalness of cancer. It's not just, you know, it could be lung cancer, it could be brain cancer, stomach cancer, it's any type. And suicide is in a close second. Like I said, this is in 2017. In Idaho, now it's number one. Especially the worst parts are in high school ages. The worst parts are from the ages to 12 all the way to 25. Think about us, that, that we're, that's our age range. That's, that's where we are. That's your friends, that's my friends. And to think that that's our, not a job, but as a responsibility that we should give ourselves just to be kind, just to take one day to compliment every single person in your class, randomly throughout the day. Some act of kindness it does more than you think. Most of the people use coping mechanisms when they go through, especially this hard time of quarantine. Their coping mechanisms is just thinking of how they've been complimented, and when they start to run out, they don't think very much of themselves. Next, I wanna talk about, specifically, uh, this is on the suicide hotline, and this is pretty heartbreaking that this has to be um, one of the top searches. This is one of the top most looked at websites uh, on Google. And they have our own categories for religions, they have their own categories for whether you're homosexual, they have their own categories for whether you're transgender, they have their own categories for your youth or your age, your specific age range. Because everyone works differently. Kindness is one coping mechanism that uh, I didn't really see in here. I think that's so sad. The fact that all you have to do is look at someone and just be generous, be kind, do some sort of act of kindness. And it's really difficult to do, and I understand that sometimes it sucks trying to be bold. But I want to challenge you guys in that. I want to challenge you guys one day before Christmas break. 
to take one day to go to every single person in your class. It doesn't have to be at one time. It can be spread out throughout the day. I want you to compliment every person in your class, one by one. Not a general statement, not some idea of, oh, I think, you know, I think your jokes were full, like this joke was funny, you know, last Tuesday. That, it could be that simple. It could be, I think your hair looks great today. It could be, Carly, I love that blue sweatshirt. It looks so good on you. It could be, Caleb, I like the fit today. You know, looks good. That's my challenge for you guys. As leaders, especially at a Christian school, just to be kind and generous. To be bold and courageous. No matter how difficult it gets, no matter how much people doubt you, no matter how much people don't understand what you're doing or why you're doing it. Do it because you know that they care. You know that it helps.